religion in the Bible. Huh. And there's many scriptures to prove that. But is your preacher going to tell you that? To get right, tell you who you are? Tell you you an Israelite? And what from, tribe you from? And that the Lord only coming to save you? No, he's not going to tell you that. He's going to tell you to love everybody. Kiss the white man's ass and get a good job. Go to college. You make some out of yourself. Niggas happy about Barack Obama. Barack Obama's not going to do a damn thing. He ain't doing a damn thing. Barack Obama's destroying this country. God. And, and that's what's up. That's why we don't give a fuck, man. That's why we don't give a fuck. Okay, I will not waste my time with backgrounds or origins of this religion, but will simply put an end to the damaging claims this religion has brought upon people everywhere, once and for all. I provided the best links um, of info below for you to do all the background research yourself. You can pause the video and read before you continue if you like, but for the rest of us, let's jump right into it. Um, this is why we're all viewing, right? Because their beliefs differ among each other and they kind of spread across the board, uh, there are no major set of core beliefs, unfortunately, which would kind of make it a cult. But after dialogue with the Pittsburgh branch, I've came across a few, just a few. These are some of the following claims. The plan of salvation only applies to the Israelites and lost tribes of Israel, and that God only has judgment to bring to the Gentile nations. Claim number two. Africans are the real and or original Jews and that other Jews are imposters. Another claim is the Edomites are the origins of the European race. Um, whatever that means. Uh, finally, there's another claim, which is nationality is taught and not belief. That was a direct quote from the Pittsburgh branch. Um, two other quotes were, uh, God was only dealing with us. And another one was, the world was made for Israel. He said that that scripture came from Ezra. Um, unfortunately, I could find that nowhere in scripture. So with that, uh, let's just start with the first claim. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dismantle this entire doctrine piece by piece and video by video. So the first claim reads, The plan of salvation applies only to the Israelites and lost tribes of Israel. Uh, scripture comes from uh, John chapter 4 verse 22. It basically says, uh, you worship what you know not. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. We have Matthew chapter 10, uh, verse 5, and it says, uh, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded him, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. And of course, you know, we have Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, where it says, But he answered and said, I was not sent. But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, if you continue to read the text, it says in the following, uh, on verse 18, it says, And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Now, it said them and the Gentiles. Now, why would God include the Gentiles in his rebuke if he did not desire for both of them to stand right in his sight? God never rebukes a man or nation without offering them any means of salvation. The Old Testament records God repeating this pattern to the people of Nineveh, Sodom and Gomorrah, Egypt, Palestine, the king of Babylon, and even his own people, of course. The saddest point is that you Israelites still believe God is telling you only to go to the Jews first, then the Gentiles, when thousands of years have passed, and people have mixed to the point of making the scripture completely irrelevant and ineffective to follow. It is clear that Christ said, Go into all the world and make disciples of every nation. But the scriptures you choose do not follow your own nationalist agenda. And no other people in the Bible has spoken worse to the people you call Gentiles than you have. You hold the record for the worst verbal beating of peoples. Claiming it to be coming judgment 
before offering them any alternative, if you believe to do so. If you're not going to teach the message Christ gave in its entirety, then never speak of it or never teach the teachings of Christ ever again and never say that you believe in the resurrection. I'm going to be reading from JewishFact.org. This is their basic root fundamental claim. It simply reads, Judaism maintains that the righteous of all nations have a place in the world to come. This has been the majority rule since the days of the Talmud, and the Talmud was written in the 2nd century AD. Judaism generally, uh, generally recognizes that Christians and Muslims worship the same God that we do, and those who follow the tenets of their religions can be considered righteous in the eyes of God. Contrary to popular belief, Judaism does not maintain that Jews are better than other people. Although we prefer ourselves as uh, God's chosen people, we do not believe that God chose the Jews because of any inherent superiority. According to the Talmud, God offered the Torah to all the nations of the earth, and the Jews were the only ones who accepted it. The story goes on to say that the Jews were offered the Torah last, and they accepted it only because God held a mountain over their heads. But... The actual translation is at the foot of the mountain, which literally means underneath the mountain. Um, you can read Exodus chapter 19, uh, verse 17. Another traditional story suggests that God chose the Jewish nation because they were the lowliest of nations, and that their success will be attributed to God's might rather than their own ability. Clearly, these ideas do not reflect a people that think they are better than other nations. Because of our acceptance of Torah, Jews have a special status in the eyes of God. But we lose that special status when we abandon Torah. Furthermore, the blessings that we receive from God by accepting the Torah come with a price. Jews have a greater responsibility than non-Jews, while non-Jews are ob only obligated to obey the seven commandments given to Noah. Jews are responsible for fulfilling 613 mitzvot in the, in the Torah, basically all 613 laws. Thus, God will punish Jews for doing things that would not be a sin for non-Jews. So, it appears that all other Jewish peoples, um, uh, unlike yourselves, uh, are more open to humanity than you are. There's further evidence in, uh, later in the video. So let me move on to another account. We have... Uh